Hi, everyone. This is Jessica Kirsten from Relatively Sane. I shouldn't even say my name because everyone knows I'm the host of it. But th- 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 welcome to Relatively Sane, whatever I should say. I, uh, I'm starving right now because I just recorded a bunch of podcasts and I bring food with me a lot. Um, if you hear a bag, it's nuts. I, I, I eat a lot of nuts. You're only supposed to eat nine nuts on the program I'm on. But first of all, then I'd have to be with four and a half men. So that's not going to work. No, I'm joking. <laughs> They're almonds. And I'm not, I'm not doing nine of them. I can't. I really actually like almonds, which is weird because I have eaten so many. I am so dumb about certain things that I don't even know if almonds come off of trees. I think they do. I wish someone was here to bounce it off of, but wait, I can bounce it off myself because I have all different personalities. Do almonds come off a tree? Is that what I'm a come from? A tree? No, an almond doesn't come from a tree. It comes from the ground, you idiot. Why is everyone talking about where almonds come from? They're fucking just like, they just drop on the ground. They don't fucking come from a tree or... I think almond come from ocean. Ocean grow almond. What the fuck you talking about? Why would an almond be an ocean? It dry. What is everyone talking about? I'm not feeling well right now. I miss nuts. I haven't eaten nuts since Norman was alive. And he had wonderful nuts. They were the size of matzo balls. And I used to roll them around in my with my tongue. While I ate a tongue sandwich, I would tongue Norman's balls. I know a lot of people are going to be offended by the stuff I just said, but I feel like you have to take risks now. It's not going to work not on risks. <sighs> These nuts are really good. And they're protein. Even if you eat 700 of them, they're healthy. There's nothing I can follow up with all those characters. Like, I'm trying to eat nuts and make sound. It's it's not going to work. Those characters get a lot of laughs, and people love them. The only thing I can follow up... Hold on. How disgusting is that? That's what every older Jewish person ends up sounding like when they eat. At some point, it goes to this... There's so many sounds going on. It's it's really horrific. The only voice I can use is this. This is, to me, the most offensive. And um, I really, I'm sorry if this offends anyone. But when you talk like this, it's so weird. <laughs> it's just like so, like that's why I don't eat almonds. I don't eat flour. I don't eat sha. I don't eat cha. I don't eat <laughs> I'm white. So I'm just white and I need to be thin. Like, even though <laughs> Oh, God. I just literally pulled something in the back of my neck, but I know a lot of people are going to laugh at what I just did. So thank you for listening to my podcast. And uh, everyone, this is very exciting, this guest. Please welcome Andrew Schultz. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Relatively Sane. I am here today with one of my favorite comics, hey. which is a big deal for me to say. This is going to sound horrible. I don't laugh hard at a lot of people, but I've always laughed hard at this comedian. And business-wise, he's the smartest in the business, and everyone keeps telling me they're going to him for advice. And oh, He's good-looking. He's charismatic. He's really nauseating, to be honest with you. <laughs> Andrew Schultz is here. Hey, that was such a nice intro. Thank you. But I really mean it. I'm Thank not you. just saying it to be nice. Thank you. I really, like, I've watched you and thought, what a great comic. Thank you. How long have you been doing it? I think maybe 13 years now. 12, 13 years. I started wow. right after school, in my last year of school. Where did you grow up? Well, I grew up in Manhattan. In Right in Manhattan? Yeah, in the East Village. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. With it was it just? Did you have a brother? Like, I have a brother. I got a little brother, and uh, 
And yeah, my folks had a dance studio on Astor Place. I love finding out about people because yeah. I would have never. Now you're. I should ask people what they think my life was first because it's way different than I, would I think never most have, people's assumption. Yeah, never. Yeah. I would thought you grew up in like Philly. Yeah. Or Brooklyn. And you're, yeah, yeah. Queens yeah, or yeah, something. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's very like. My dad's a Manhattanite too. My dad was like born and raised in Manhattan. Oh, so they, that's so. My okay. mom's from Scotland. Oh. Came here like in her 20s. So she has a strong accent? She still has an accent. I yeah. love that accent. Yeah, yeah, it's a good one. She's wow. Good. Does yeah. she wear clogs? <laughs> no, 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 no. Is that Because they don't. <laughs> 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 That's the reason why. <laughs> I know I said it on purpose because I had I a feeling it. <laughs> Skirts, I they know. wear kilts. I love. They do the By kilt the way, thing. Yeah. I'm you know what's weird? My mom does wear clogs. She does? Yeah, but like that's on her own volition. And there's right. nothing See, cultural. See, I knew that. I'm very it. psychic. You're perceptive. I knew that's what that your mom wore clogs. You could clogs. see it. You could see I it see it in me. her face. Yeah. I've seen videos of her. Got a Let me face. say a couple things. Yeah. First of all, I love when men wear kilts. You, you know, I'm with a woman, and I, but I, I find men very attractive, and uh -huh. I actually think it's hot when a guy wears a kilt. Why is that? It's wrong. <laughs> Like it's not supposed to happen. It's like when a w hot woman wears a, a pantsuit. It's ah. fucking hot to me. Okay, or like shaves her head or something like that. If she has a, a gorgeous face, it's they can get stunning. Away with it. But it's if they're not, it's arrogant when they do that. Yeah, I know they're like trying to go for like oh, I don't care. But what you're really saying is I'm so fucking beautiful. Right. I can shave my head. I can be bald, and I'm still better looking than you bitches. Yeah. If, it if, is if, fucking arrogant. Hey, I know. And people, that, this is going to sound so bad, go. but it's the truth. Women that do, aren't aren't incredibly attractive yeah. would not just shave their hair off. No, they're and, not. No, they They'll don't cover see their, that. Oh, they got the bangs, they've coming around the sides. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's foliage. Yeah. I mean, yeah. when you see an Orthodox woman, does it make you not want to fuck her if she has a wig on? You know what? I found out about the wigs late in life. Mm -hmm. My, I think my, up until like middle school, I had like two stereotypes of like Orthodox Jewish women. Mm -hmm. And most people assume I'm Jewish. I'm not. I would in a hundred percent think that you were Jewish. Most people assume I am, but my stereotypes obviously were the the outfits, mm -hmm. right? And two was that the women have incredible hair. <laughs> I, I swear to God, you just thought they all like, went to a great hair. I was like, these girls are getting blowouts every day. Like this hair is immaculate. <laughs> right? Ten, some of them are ten thousand dollar wigs. Did you know that? No. What oh, happened yeah, to this humility? No, that's not. They, a lot of them choose what they're gonna be okay be with. About. Know. Yeah, a lot of I them like will wear that wig and then like down a sausage. You know what yeah. I mean? Like they <laughs> kind of pick and choose what they're gonna, what law they're gonna. Now this is the this is the Hasidim or this is the modern Orthodox. Well, there's so many different levels now. Okay. Modern Orthodox. They're not still... shaving heads. Modern Orth. No, but they'll wear a wig. Over uh, their, their hair. They will. A beautiful one. But they'll wear a wig. And then they'll wear very nice clothes. And then there's ones who wear wigs who wear schmatas. You know what that is? Like no. Just, just, oh, just rags. Yeah, just hand-me-downs. Like Did a, a you quilt. come from like a really Jewish family? No, not at all. But you know. You know like the terminology. I do a lot of shows for them. Ah. And I, I've been doing a whole new bit where I don't tell them that I'm married to a woman and have kids. It's hilarious because there's no point. Because <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. they're going to be like, what are you talking about? Yeah, we yeah, yeah. we decided not to go with a comedian. You know, they're going <laughs> to not accept it. Yeah. So I lie because I'll say I have kids when I'm during the show. And then they're like, oh, does your husband stay home and take care of them? I'm like, he's so supportive. Yeah. <laughs> My husband, Shmuley, is really a great guy. Like, it's not worth telling them. Yeah. But they pay a lot yeah they pay a lot for stand-up yeah. they're bankrolling a lot of comics yeah they really are like a lot of our friends i think make the majority of their living doing the jewish circuit yeah i do but yeah. the non-religious jews like i i grew up with right. are the best lit audience in the world really yeah why because they're free they laugh at a lot of stuff they're not mm. it's not they're not politically correct they also have like a not. culture of comedy like yeah, comedy we, exists in jewish culture like, totally where it exists they're often great crowds and the cultures where they're just finding out about it, they're just young. And they act immature in the audience because culturally it's young for them. Mm -hmm. It's just like America sucks at soccer because we just got it. Yeah. If you give us a little time, we're going to figure out this soccer thing. Trust me. Yeah. But it takes time for it to get into the fabric 
of the I culture. We don't know you. the rules yet. You know? Yeah. And everyone, all these young kids are confused by everything now. Mm. They don't even know what they're allowed to laugh at or not. Yes. No one used to think about comedy so much. You would just watch a comic and laugh. Yes. Now I see them processing what I'm saying. It's yes. the most insane thing. Because there's a cost for laughing now. I know. Well, that's their problem. Yeah. I mean, their loss. They're a little bit it's, lost and like people are telling them all these different things. It's, it's tricky. I try to like, I try to figure out like what we are, mm -hmm. you know, as comics. And I think the best thing I can relate it to is like, if, if you asked a football player, like not knowing what he did for a living and you're asked, what do you do for a living? And he was like, well, I run at other human beings that are often not looking at me <laughs> <laughs> like yeah. as fast as I can. And like, sometimes I can cuss them and like, they might not remember their children <laughs> later on in life. And like, you know, I break their bones, et cetera. And like, obviously the first reaction would be like, oh my God, you're a monster. Right. But then when they were like, no, 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 I just do that on the football field. We'd be like, you're a football player. Oh my God. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I wish they understood that about stand up. They don't. We're fucking At good all. people. I know. When we go on stage, we get in touch with the evil shit inside of us, mm -hmm. and then we find a way to have fun with it, but it's in the context of that stage. That's our football field. That's a brilliant point. Something there. There's something there. There's a there. lot there. Yeah. They, they don't understand that we're just, plus we get off on people being uncomfortable, the yeah. best comics. Yeah. We see that you're tense and uncomfortable yeah. and we're gonna go even further with it because you and I are very similar that way. Right. Like the minute you try to silence me, oh, it's gonna go. get so dark, <laughs> it's bad. Yeah. Like I will say the craziest things yeah. and you're the king of that. I don't know about that. You're great at it. I would it. look at you. I would you're, look at you oh, for that Oh, stop one. it. You're great at it. Wait, I have to get But it's because we felt yeah. uncomfortable. It's like, we understand when someone is feeling awkward because we felt it. Well, like, I want, that's why I want to know okay, about. Go, so go. you grow up with your parents owning a dance studio. Yeah, ballroom I was, dancing. I love Partner that. Partner dance yeah. Two things. Yeah. Number one, I've seen you dance with your mother and I was in, I was in heaven. Oh, good, good, Because I dance with my mom a lot. Oh, good, good. My mom, we love to dance and we're both good dancers. And I saw a video of you dancing with your mom and yeah. I was like, this is the most beautiful thing. I uh, love this. Good. Yeah, she, it was really great. And then I saw a video of you dancing recently and I'm like, he's a great dancer. My mom might have taught me a couple things. I don't know. Yeah, my mom always said people, guys that are good dancers are very good in bed. I don't know if I'll, uh, I like to lay on my back. Yeah, me too. I'm so tired. Yeah, it's better. It's well, For at your parties. age still? Yeah. Yeah, I'm 36. Oh yeah, I mean, yeah. meaning like you're you're at the. I'm not I feel still, like I'm but you're at that point now. On my back. Oh really? Yeah, like I feel like my girl gets off way more when I'm on my back. Yeah. And I like it better because I can control myself way better. Right. You know, it's like when I'm on top. You know what it is? Like when I'm on top, it's like I control how I feel. It's like yeah. You, you know, you know what I mean? It's like I'm. It's the difference between like I take the cookies out of the cookie jar myself, or someone serves them to me. Mm -hmm. It's like if I'm gonna take, I'm gonna keep eating the cookies. But if you're serving me the cookies, it's up to you. So you do what makes you feel good. I get oh, off so whenever. No, so you like a power bottom kind of girl. I'm a power bottom. You're a... <laughs> <laughs> I think you just called me a power bottom. I'm a power bottom. I'll call it power back. I'm a power back. <laughs> I love that so much. I mean, it feels better for the girl, I think. I think so. My girl likes it when I'm on top. I think she just wants to like an equitable relationship in a bed where she's not doing all the work. So I get it. But... If you get off way easier when you're on top, and I get off wherever, right? This seems like the most pragmatic solution. Yeah, you could to be getting on the side. Off. I, I mean, could be on the side. So you still have all that because like, you're not medicated, right? No, not really. I mean, take finasteride. What's that? It's just so I don't lose my hair. It sounds like it sounds like uh, for a faster ride that you just said. <laughs> it's often, uh, yeah. It, they say that there might be like a side effects for it. I don't even go into side effects. I don't believe in side effects. First of all, I need to. Well, anyone could have side effects from anything. I don't believe in it. If I don't say it, they don't exist. I, I, I don't want to lean in. I'll I know. manifest well, of it. Of course. Yeah. That, Andrew, that's such a good point. Yeah. Don't tell me what I can't have because it's going to happen. If you, you know where our me, brains will I know, go. I know. So they'll go to a place that's going to make it fucking pop up. So I don't want it to pop up, so I don't even read it. Well, I'm going to go on this for faster ride because you I my hair is getting very thin. Thi no, it's thinning. It's thinning? Yeah. I guarantee yeah. they have for faster ride for women or something like that. It's called for a faster ride. I call it finaster ride, but I would, if I were you, just finaster go with ride. That. Finaster ride, yeah. Okay. Propecia. Do you feel like it's helping grow your hair? Yeah, you know, I had... Um, 
I, I, I rem- I've probably been on like 10 years. Oh, your hair looks great. Thank you. But I, rem- I noticed like early, early. And I was like maybe 25 or something like that. I was like, wait, is something going on here? And then I got on. Oh, it. I know. Yeah. It's hard. Yeah. Yeah. And even worse for women. Really tough. I know. Because you guys have the expectation to have your hair. If I don't have my hair and I get bald, I will not wear a wig. I'm just putting that out there because I will not wear. Like, I'm not going to look orthodox when lean I'm not. Lean into the orthodoxy. No, I'll lean into getting really fit, and then I'll start wearing a lot more makeup, and I'll have no hair. I I oh. would go that route, like just like an amber. Like I would. Do you want to go pop. like a you beat cancer route too? Because I think there's like no, some I don't value in that, like a GoFundMe. Actually, you know what? I probably would get very famous if I did the go- I beat cancer thing. That's it. I might do it. You just made me come up with a really good idea. And here's the cool thing about it. You beat it. Right. Because you never had it. Okay, that's one of the funniest and best things I've ever so, heard in my whole I'm just, life. I'm just saying, I we know, know the outcome I may be rid- of this journey. I may be riddled with it because I'm so angry. <laughs> what if, what if, so just what if I shave my head <laughs> for a deal and then I got it? That's what that's, I'm thinking. Yeah, like, that's not What if not we good. manifested the cancer like we're talking about these these side effects? Right. Oof. But what now well, we're do, writing now, a movie. Do I have to now lose a, a lot of weight to do the cancer thing? I do because when you go through that, you're not you're not no. heavy. You're Artie's not, been on be on coke for years, and he's still you know that's Artie's true. Artie's got some extra pounds. Right, you could be a vegetarian and be a fat fuck because you it, eat like fried avocado. I exactly. Know. So you're frying the the shit, the can the anti cancer stuff. I don't know what is well, it called. I don't know chemo. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Maybe I just binge on chemo and it keeps me heavy. I think that's how it works. I do too. Yeah. I'm going to go to Sloan Kettering and ask some people. Ask some people. I mean, you could always say if like you're gaining weight, you could be like, ah, oh, it's the cancer. It's growing. That's actually a, ve- like you mean, <laughs> meaning like I have a hundred pound tumor. <laughs> <laughs> Jessica, I think you've been putting on some pounds. That's really insensitive. This cancer has been hard for me to fight. <laughs> right. If you said to me, Jessica, I'm a little concerned and I'm like, listen, I can't control how fast my tumor is growing <laughs> in my hips and ass. I have a 70 What type of cancer pa- do you have, Jessica? A- <laughs> ass <laughs> cancer. Oh, ass anal cancer. No, no, ass you cancer. You have ass cancer, in yeah. My, I, the, 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 cheeks. the cheeks. I have cancer in the cheeks of yeah. my ass. Yeah. And my stomach. And the stomach, yeah. Yeah. And, and a little Not bit- in my stomach, in the or surrounding my stomach. It's the a whole, different type of cancer. All that fat is cancer. Yeah. It's called FUPA. <laughs> I don't know if you've heard of, of it's a very severe type of cancer. I mean it just targets just targets that one area. It's down to my ankles a little. It's, it's what really kind go- of, what kind of can oh I've been diagnosed with FUPA. It's very bad. It's, it's a stage eighteen. <laughs> Really, FUPA's a lot. I mean, it is. FUPA's I, a lot. Yeah, it is. It yeah. is. I, I don't. Your your girlfriend. Speaking of FUPA, your yeah. girlfriend. I'm joking. <laughs> she she does not have FUPA. <laughs> she just killed herself listening to the podcast. She does not have FUPA. <laughs> no, She's great girl. Gorgeous. Where'd you meet her? Uh, Instagram. Ah, that's where a lot of people are meeting yeah. now. She slid in the DMs. Alpha female. She did. Yeah. Yeah. That's hot. And she was like. Like, I didn't respond, and her thinking was, I thought this was so hot. She was like, he must not have seen it. Like, oh, that's, <laughs> she never she's, she's even secure. went to, yeah, she's like, she's like, what's wrong with him? Oh, he must have missed it, and then message again. I so get that. Yeah. A confident woman it's is so really hot. hot. Even if you're not, just pretend to be, because it's really it hot. It works. It does it work. Works. And then when you find out, and then when you find out that there are things that they're insecure about, like after you kind of fall in love with someone who's, who's confident yeah. and like, you know, very strong, then you find out there's things they're insecure about. They become a whole person. It's kind of, it's almost like an overwhelming attachment you have to them. Yeah, know, well, it's a vulnerability. It's you beautiful. S- you see them yeah. vulnerable for the first time. You're like, N- and then the the primal thing takes over where you're like, nothing will happen to you. You know, like, like you're just- you're protective of Yeah, them. because I didn't know you needed that. And then I found out, you needed that, and it's like, okay, now my primal shit kicks in. I like that. You know what I I'm like saying? People to be protective of me. Hundred percent. I really, even friends. Yeah. I, I really, as a woman, believe it or not, really, really like. I'm, I'm a little traditional in certain ways, and this is just me. And I'm allowed to say this, no yeah. matter what anyone thinks, because this is literally just how I feel. Yeah. Remember when we could just say things and we didn't need to preface? I don't preface a lot, but, yeah. but with this, I, I think it's important. Oh, you're going hard. <laughs> oh, something's gonna happen. No Is it gonna be intended. about Nazis? What's no, going on? Okay. No, I love Nazis. <laughs> My favorite kind of person. 
I, my f- ideal person is a Nazi. Actually, my <laughs> wife is married the same day as Hitler. I, I purposely chose her your, your wife on April was 20th. married the same day? I'm married. I mean born. born. I didn't uh, mean married. Yeah, my wife okay. was married to Hitler, yeah. and then we found each other. No, right. Never she was forget. born the same day as Hitler, which makes sense. Is she Jewish? She's very tough on me. Um, no, she's Italian and Irish. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, she's not. She She's really attractive and great but she's tough you know uh yeah. so anyway Italian's so similar to juice i know it is the I same mean, thing it's the same thing we just have more money and they have more food they, they cared do. about food they, you guys cared about finance and but tribally the food thing is so crazy in obsessed. italian fi- i've They're never obsessed. seen anything like it yeah it's, it's obsession. insane yeah and it's, it's good though it's so yeah. good but it's a it's a 3 p.m till 10 p.m experience yeah. with Every hour, there's a different thing coming out. It's yeah. it's a lot. Yeah. It's really. It's like they're not confident that they would just hang out with each other unless there was food. No. Well, that's all they. Oh, well, we got one about. right here. Yeah, James is is he's well, he's half Jewish. Oh, really? James Serpico, Jim's son, is half Jewish, half ah, Italian. Okay. So, like, see how easy that is to put together. Yeah. Same culture. I know. It's it, it's very. Do you find it's common, James? Yeah. yeah. It's a it's very common. I mean, we complain more. Jews complain more. Yes. Trust me, dude. I love that Sebastian bit. Did you see the Sebastian bit where whenever his wife is Jewish and he goes, uh, whenever they go out to eat with her family, uh, <laughs> he goes, he goes, wherever the maitre d takes us to sit down, I don't sit down because I know that's not where we're sitting. Oh, I've been doing a whole <laughs> bit about that. <laughs> what is it? Because I talk about it's how so when true. I do these Jewish gigs that there's there's an hour and a half of conversation. I listen to them outside of the theater. Right. I listen backstage. Yeah, smart. And they go on and Norman needs to sit on the end seat because <laughs> Norman has the prostate pro I don't understand. I don't have a prostate problem. Gloria should sit there. She uses the restroom more. Th- I smell shit. Like, they'll just keep talking and talking. And then the aide will get, see, this is edgy. I've been doing this on stage yeah. they'll be like um louise where do you want i don't care where i sit like there's always yeah. a black aide who they treat <laughs> like shit who they think is they're throwing a bone to because they took her to a fucking comedy show yeah. you know aren't you glad we took you for entertainment yeah. we paid for your seat <laughs> so um but like that's, that's really her true. idea of a night out yeah that's where she wants to be <laughs> is the, the fucking up, in florida <laughs> yeah that's exactly she doesn't want to be with her family or her kids in Jamaica. She <laughs> wants to be there. So, uh, yeah, I what I was going to say was, if I were to be with someone really butchy mm-hmm. who literally appears male and and has that energy, because it's yeah. really an energy thing for me, yeah. I'd I'd want them to have a dick. Like, that's that's just me personally. Right. I'd be with a guy. Meaning, I don't want them to have a dick. I would just be with a man. Right. Because energy-wise, it's very similar to me. And that's, that's the thing that I guess I don't know, because I've never had... Uh, I've never been in that situation. If you could fuck anything, what would it be? I'm going to answer squash. Really? It has to be cooked. Yeah, but that also that pumpkin, there's something about those guts when you're scooping out those guts. Like, Oh my God, that might feel like good. Like a jack-o'-lantern, yeah. I mean, we're talking about vegetation, right? We're not talking about actual human beings? No, no, no. No, like we're a talking fruit about or vegetable. I think Let's, pumpkin. We'll, we'll, I think pumpkin. Really? 100%. Yeah, just because the guts, you're all, it, it would probably recreate the sound of sex. You know, there'd be a lot of like similarities. Right. And you so could you decide would cut the it whole. out. Would you color around it? Like, would you put a face on it? Or oh, just... yeah. Or you just cut out like the bottom part that kind of already looks like a butt. Right. You know, because it kind of tucks in like that. It does. Exactly. So you cut out the bottom. And I never just... realized my asshole looks like a pumpkin. You are a pumpkin. I'm going to start calling it pumpkin. You should. Come on, pumpkin. Come on. Let it out. <laughs> <laughs> so what kind of so you, it would be an asshole so you wouldn't put a face there honestly i don't know i guess what i'm saying is like you just do with what you have right, right. that's what humans do it's like you just cook what food you got that's you know what i mean it's like right if you have nothing else to fuck and a pumpkin's around you're, you're gonna, gonna fuck a pumpkin or if you're a guy and you want to fuck guys you're gonna fuck a butthole because it's there i don't think gay guys are attracted to buttholes Right, because then the girl with the nicest butthole, the gay guys would be like, "Oh, I want to hit that," but they don't like that. So I think the same. When I hear like a lesbian go, "Oh my god, penises are disgusting," it's like, yeah, penises don't look nice, but girls want to get fucked, and it just so happens that guys have penises. So if they're into guys, they're like, "Please put that fuck stick in me," essentially. Right. It's like oh who god, we're attracted so to is on. first. There we go. 
That's what I'm thinking. You don't think that a gay guy would care if it's a woman's asshole or a man's? I do. That's what I'm saying. That what I'm saying is we're attracted to the person first, and then whatever parts they have, we make do. Yes. Right? But so the you gay guy not, looks. But if yeah. you were to be with a gay guy, you would not, meaning a man, you would not get turned on. Would you get hard and that, all that other that's stuff? That's what I'm saying. It's like I wouldn't, right? right. But I've, I've been with a girl, and I've put my dick in her butt. Right? Mm -hmm. That is. Was that how, recent? No, actually, I'm not a big fan of it. But that is how gay guys Did have sex stuck? with each other. No, I didn't get stuck, but it's just like, I think it's pointless. Why don't you put the insides of a pumpkin in the girl's asshole and then you'll like it more? I think that. I think that's something that I've all that, I, that I've never thought about trying. Yeah, I think you should I text your girlfriend it. when you leave here. Yeah, and be like, because there's a lot of squash still in the market. Acorn yeah. squash, butternut squash. You can yeah. still grab something. But it's for me. It's never like squash because I think the squash, it, it's just it doesn't look right for me. Even though the one the the butternut squash kind of looks like it fit it perfectly. It almost looks like a holster for a dick. That's true. Yeah. I'm trying to think of what I would, because I wouldn't fuck a pumpkin because, no, no I couldn't, I, I used to be able to fit that in, in years ago, but now. After the kids, it got smaller. Well, I didn't even have the kids, but it still got smaller after the kids because we didn't, you know, it's been hard. Right. So it used to be a pump. It Now it would be a little pump. You know those little tiny ones? Yeah, the baby ones, like yeah, a gourd. Yeah, they're so cute. Yeah, with the warts on it. Yeah, the gourd with the... That actually would be nice. Yeah. The warts, warts feel good. A little texture. Yeah. I was with a guy with warts in uh, college and I, I didn't, I felt weird about it at first because yeah. I was like, oh, I don't know if he should have warts. Yeah. But then I was like, this feels good. I'm going to let it go. Yeah. I think you're just so open-minded, you know? I am. You're like super progressive. I really am. Yeah. I really, I'm woke. You are so woke. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. feel very woke. Yeah. I don't know. I think I have to go to the market after this. Me too. So let's get back to your family. So why do farmers fuck their cousins when they got these vegetables just all over the place? Well, a lot of them go to the animals. They don't go to their cousins. We haven't even discussed fucking animals. Okay. What's your view on it? Oh, I mean, I'm Scottish. If you could fuck any animal. Sheep. It's, it's not even if it's like in my DNA. Sheep. Well, sheep are very, they're very easygoing. Yeah. Is and, that why? Well, yeah, and also their asses have like a nice bounce when they walk. Oh yeah, they do. They do. They, they, they shimmy. They lean with a walk. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're kind of like a girl walking in, like I'm here for the club. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What's up, girl? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a sheep. Yeah. I don't know what I would do. Oh God, what well, would have to be something that fucked me? Because uh, unless I wore a strap on, uh, this is really now we're this is the most serious. sexual. I know. I I didn't want to get so sexual. I wanted to talk comedy business. I'm sick of talking about comedy. <laughs> I will talk about comedy in a second, but I'm trying to think. I'm of, joking. Yeah, Whatever no, I know. Want. Again, because things have really uh, gotten smaller, it would have been a horse in my 20s. I probably could have gotten plowed by a stallion. Yeah. Now it would have to be, I don't know. What's a small, a platypus's face? Yeah, that looks good. A beak? Yeah. I don't know what would work now. Yeah, or like a giraffe. Giraffes have like a long tongue. I think a giraffe's tongue would go in in me and out my mouth like that. They have the longest tongue. Long tongue, is that? Do do lesbians like that? A long tongue, is that something that you look at? I don't think sexually? it's a, no, no. I'm not like oh my god, I'm so attracted to Melissa because of her tongue. What are you looking at? That I'm curious about that. Me? Like, oh, yeah, the like, whole thing. But like what? I check women out. But what like do you, you want to do. do with it? Oh, I want to like when say, I look at a girl's butt, I'm looking at me. A hundred percent their butt. But what are you doing with it? You're just oh, I'm, grabbing it? I'm vile in my head. Okay, give me an example. Well, I, if I'm looking at a woman that I'm very attracted to, uh, you know, I'm thinking about having sex with her. Like right. grabbing her ass, fucking, yeah, the yeah. whole thing. Gotcha. I hope my 13-year-old is listening to this. <laughs> and I like boobs. <laughs> right. And I like, you know, I love a woman too. I'm yes. like you. I love I love heels. Yes. Oh my god. Into I love that. It. I've been with a lot of women who are feminine but have like a male energy, but they they they're pretty feminine. I have a friend like that. Yeah. Yeah. Super feminine, just, dresses super feminine, but when you're around her, she exudes this male energy and she's bi. That's hot though. She's the best. It's the best of both worlds. 
It right? is. Because you get to bro out with her. Like, mm-hmm. I bro out with her. Well, that's what everyone does with me. See, you and I haven't done that, but I get pictures from Krista Stefano. Everyone sends me pictures of women. And they're like, look at this fucking aunt. Look what I got ah. sent. So they love it because I'm a woman and they do that with me. And I'm always like, holy shit, you know. Yeah. I'm gross. You're gross with it, but you're also objective. I'm objective and I try to help them to not get warts themselves right. all over their body. Crazy's from- had warts, come on. Yeah, probably like 18 times. I mean, yeah. he probably has them now. It's, you got to be careful because mm. a lot of people are dirty. Mm. So you really have to be careful. Mm. Thank you so much to all of my Patreon members for supporting the podcast. All right, hold up. Could you take a little off, off the peas? You're hitting them too hard. The uh, not p- action. Thank you so much to all of my Patreon members for supporting the podcast. Hold on. Now you're whispering Patreon. Is there a reason you're whispering? Well, you said to take the (laughs) put. Somewhere in the middle. Okay, okay. Ready? Action. Thank you so much to all of my Patreon (sighs) members. Now you got to pause. For those of you who don't know, Patreon members, is that okay? (laughs) It was perfect. Why'd you stop? Oh, okay. Patreon members. Cut. Let's go back to the beginning. Thank you so much. And action. Thank you so much to all my Patreon members for supporting the podcast. For those of you who don't know, Patreon members get early access to the podcast, ad-free episodes, and access to monthly live streams where we talk more about... All right, let's take it back to the beginning. That was perfect. Do it exactly like that. I just did it well, though, but why are you starting over? Thank you so much to all of my patron... Cut. (sighs) Why are you screaming? Because I'm just trying to get through this. Action. Thank you so much to all of my... Thank you so much to all of my Patreon members. For those of you who don't know, Patreon members get early access to the podcast. Perfect. Keep going. There's so many Ps. Keep going. Keep going. Ad-free episodes. You could cut this out, right? For those of you who don't know, Patreon members get early access to the podcast, ad-free episodes, and access to monthly live streams where we talk more about being relatively sane. Hold up. Did we agree on monthly live streams? Yes, you told me I should do them because it'll get more members. I don't know how to do a monthly live stream. Don't you just talk in your phone? Uh, We'll figure it out. Come on, let's get through this. We have to go. We should speed this up. All right. Thank you so much to all my Patreon members for supporting this podcast. For those of you who don't know, Patreon members get early access to the podcast, ad-free episodes, and access to monthly live streams. We don't know what that is, but whatever. Where we talk about being relatively sane. If you want to join our fantastic community that is so corny, go to patreon.com slash Jessica Curson. That's patriot.com slash Jessica Curson. That's patreon. I think you said patriot.com. Go to petroleum. I mean, patreon.com slash Jessica Curson. That's patreon.com slash Jessica Curson. Patreon.com slash Jessica Curson. Thanks again. And cut. That's a wrap. Ugh. Who did you start out with, like, in comedy with your group? Were there guys that you... Yeah. Do you have, like, a posse of male comics that you... I have a few people in my crew, but uh, the ones that have kind of, like, lasted... I would say the people I started out with... First, there's this kid named, uh, you know, Akash Singh. Mm -hmm. That's like my right hand man. He is great. Uh, Love Akash. A kid named Mike Blaustein, who's out in the West Coast now. Khalees Hawkins. I love. We were all over at the Village Lantern. Uh, Derek Gaines and like a lot of the Philly guys. Yeah, yeah. Started to come up, and then like the next generation that kind of came after that was like Che, you know, Pete Davidson, Mm -hmm. and like that kind of group. But yeah, I mean, like I was from New York, right? So it's like comedy was never my community to hang out with. Where a lot of comics moved to New York. I know. So like they have no friends and then comics become not only their coworkers, but like their best friend group. But for me, like all my best friends were here. So it was never like we're doing a comics Thanksgiving or something like that. Mm -hmm. And I feel like on some level I missed out on the camaraderie that comes with that and those relationships. In some ways, I did too, because I was always in relationships. That also happens. Is well, it's like a big thing for me. You miss out on a lot. I know. You go to a festival, and then you and your girl are going out to eat. I know. Instead of hanging out with you know, and the people boys. Are like, why can't you hang out? I'm like, because yeah. I have a family. Yeah. I can't be gone all the time. I'm already yeah. on the road. Though I will say this, like when I have a girl, I'm much more focused. I'm you know, I'm less distracted. Like I'm not chasing pussy or like. You know, I'm not partying really as much. Like, I, I get a lot more done. And then I looked at all these people I look up to, like a lot of successful people. It's like, they're all married. That's what everyone says. It's, it is I true. I talk to male comics about that a lot. It's true. It's so easy. Most of them have that grounding. And they it's do. important. 
because it's, it's so very easy. important. We're fucking, we, you know, we got a little void in us, right? Mm -hmm. And it's like we like that void filled. So if it's not going to be on stage with some chuckles, man, it's going to be maybe going out and partying. Like how many of our friends or colleagues are fucking sex addicts or like drug addicts? It's a big or deal sober? now. It's really a big deal. Yeah, a lot of guys and women. Comics will go to you know fucking or shopping or gambling fill or whatever. The void. I, of course, fill and the it's nothing void. will fill it except for your own personal growth. Exactly, and then I think and you what, know that you're selling out theaters all over the country. Things have been cool all and over the I world. Feel, I feel great, but I'm also aware like, oh, part of this is coming from the fact that I've been having success, having a girlfriend like I do now. It's great to have someone to kind of lean on mm -hmm. when it's very important. You know, shit is isn't going too well. What does she do? She um she's in fashion, so she used to be a she used to be a, a buyer at Barney's. Oh and, okay. Uh, yeah, she's corporate side. I love fashion. Barney's. Yeah, yeah, R.I.P. But yeah, she's like on the corporate side of you know fashion, and I think she just got into uh, Stern for business school. Oh great! For yeah, so if she goes and she'll go, that would be awesome. You know? That's so great. But yeah, she's like a real fucking hungry go-getter like she's a boss yeah you know? she's independent which is you get gotta be with someone independent I if love you're it. at your level my dad worked for my mom so like i always oh, I I came that. from like strong women like so my i think what oftentimes gets me confused like with me is like i have a very high expectation of women i don't baby women because my mom was never babied and she didn't baby us so like my idea of like what women are capable of is very high. So when I see like girls who like went to Harvard complaining about like the wage gap and I'm like, my mom dropped out of school at 15 in Scotland and came here and like ended up buying property. I don't really have as much. That's so, I love that. But that it's you, just cause what I know. I know, but it's really great. Yeah. It so, is. I don't know. And I, I understand that's my advantage. Having her as like that example. Right. Cause a lot of people don't, they don't, but it was cool because now I know like when it comes to the women I date, like in my girlfriend's like, ah, yeah. You, You're a badass. Yeah. So do you feel like you were a happy kid? Yeah, I fucking love being a kid. So where does your because the comedy comes from? I don't know. Not that you have to be depressed or anxious. Yeah. But what do you think is your like thing? So two things. Like one, I don't subscribe to the idea like that. In order to be funny, you have to be suicidal. Oh, I don't either. But you know how like for a little bit in comedy, it like there's this trope that kind of mm -hmm. bumped out. It's like, oh, if you're not depressed or want to kill yourself, then mm -hmm. you must not be, oh, all comics are these sad clowns. Mm -hmm. It's like, mm, nah, you could be funny. Yeah. You know, and then I, that being said, like, I'm, I'm, I'm sure I'm still searching for my mom's love. You know, my, I'm sure my mom's like a tough Scottish woman, mm -hmm. you know, who's my, my whole Scottish family is not the most. Uh, it, you know loving my dad's mm -hmm. more of like the nurturer mm -hmm. maybe in my family you know he's like the superhero yeah kind of guy for me but like more of just like a sweetheart guy who's just really caring and really supportive and that kind of stuff and um but i'm sure i'm searching for that but i always saw comedy as a way to get along you know like mm -hmm. i had all these friends from these different walks of life like none of us had the same background you know when you grow up in like the same thing i love that and that's what it was it was like you like i have friends who grew up in like a jewish community grew up in like mm -hmm. italian community or whatever and like they literally all had the same family all their dads were firemen or, or police mm -hmm. or all their dads were finance or real estate guy they all had the same life so everybody understood how to communicate and me all of my friends were different. This guy's dad is in jail. This guy's dad's a cop. This guy's from Dominican Republic. His parents don't even speak English. Like all these people were totally different. And the way that I guess I connected with them was just kind of making everybody laugh. It was this great equalizer like that in sports. And I just, I just loved it. And it was so cool that I could kind of communicate with all these different people. Well, I think that's what made you also a great comic because you're, you're cultured and you're not, mm. You're aware, mm. so you can go, and your crowd work is sick. Thank you. I mean, I I I'm very good at it too. I you're think the best. if you're aware, because not again, it's an art. Not everyone can do it. Not everyone wants to do it. But yeah. yours is so on point. But I think it's from just being around so many different kinds of people and knowing people yeah. so well. You could tell who's been around people who aren't. Yeah. Just their culture, like when they're talking to them. Mm -hmm. Like even when I see you busting balls, you make you start getting into your characters and these kind of things. Like you're saying nuanced shit within the characters. Yeah. So that the people that you're making fun of, I've always realized this. If you make fun of any group, but they feel like you know something about them that you're yeah. not supposed to know, they go say whatever you want. Yeah. You cared a little bit about me to learn yeah. about my culture. Yeah. You knew a little thing. I trust you. 
if if a comic just goes with the hacky joke, then or the, judgmental or being just stupid, yeah, it's like they're not even they're just doing it to to. You're right, be hacky. That's it. If it's hacky, they'll see it. But if they tell that you actually care, you know a little tiny little thing. That's the thing that's happened with me is like anybody tries to like cancel me for something I said, you will have to deal with the actual group I'm talking about first. Yeah, I, well, I always say that too. I'm like the people that are worried if they should laugh or not are the racists. 100%. I say that on stage every night. It's so true though. I'm like, look at you, the white people that are getting tense. I'm like, because you're racist. And you're. And meanwhile, the black people are dying laughing right now. And, and what is the closest thing that we have to that? Yeah. And I think you even said this. I think I even saw you watching this, like guys who are probably closeted gay or yeah. like super homophobic. Did you say something about this on stage? I always say that. Yes. What is it? Because I, I don't want to tell you. No, I say that. I'm like, what, you probably get hard at the gym and don't know why. Exactly. Like, right? you're confused and you're scared, so you're not going to laugh at this because it'll, you know, you it, want ass. You want ass, yeah. right? And it's the same thing I feel like with, with racism. I think you said in the joke, I, I remember, I think we were at the Village Underground, I think I stopped you afterwards, and I was like, that is the best observation about people who won't laugh. You won't laugh because it exposes, that's how you feel about I these groups of people. I love that you got it. And also how you feel about yourself. When I talk about my weight and yeah. people get tense, I'm like, you don't even fucking know me. You yeah. don't care if I'm fat. Yeah, yeah, you, you don't, don't care give if a I'm fuck. so fat I can't get, I have to get cut out of a room. <laughs> You're upset about what you ate today. Yes. This is about you. Yes, and get out of that shit. I know. Well, they have to go, th people have to go accept themselves. I mean, the more they accept so, themselves, the more they're going to laugh. You know what it is? And I, and I really feel like it. in some places of the country, people don't need to laugh. Mm -hmm. If you go to places, if you go to Buffalo, they need to laugh. Buffalo needs to they laugh. Need, so they don't care if you say something that could be misconstrued as yes, racist or like a so fat joke. Whatever. They're like, fuck it. I worked at a factory all week. Yeah. I need to laugh. Right. In New York. You just did a rumble boxing class. You had a delicious oat milk latte. You had a nice croissant at lunch. You had a beautiful That's office that a has a point. ping pong table. Yeah. Right? You got backgammon. Yeah. Life is so good that you don't need a laugh so you can decide what you'll laugh at and what you won't laugh That's at. That's so true. I can tell you You're places spoiled. where they need a laugh. Syracuse, all the Needs a laugh. I know. You go anywhere where shit I, is rough? Minnesota needs a laugh. Needs a I laugh. I know. There's, there's a... <laughs> What? So true. I'm laughing because it's so true. They need it. They're incredible audiences. They're the best because they need it. And the ones that are here, and you could tell them, you're on vacation and you decide you're going to come to New York and spend $15,000. You don't need this. You were just on the top of the Empire State Building and you went to one of the finest restaurants in the world and then you came to a show. You, you are privileged enough to sit back and decide if you will laugh at this or not. Exactly. Fuck them. I don't yeah. need them. That's not my crowd. That's, my yeah. crowd are the ones who want it. Yeah, my crowds are the ones who are not okay emotionally and physically. There and we they go. Need to, they're don't, yeah, they're like, if I don't laugh, I'm going to go into a home. We literally yeah. built an audience, and I mean this, and I'm not bragging, I mean this in 100% serious, globally of people who enjoy fucked up jokes because it reminds them of normalcy. Yes. Yeah, so I need to talk to you about this yes. because people, of course, so many people know you and some people that are listening to this don't know what you've done mm. or how you did it. And it's really rare and admirable. And I'm not just saying, I mean, like everyone uses you in, as an example. They should. I hope at you all what, run with it. At what point did you decide that you need to take things into your own hand? What happened? <sighs> Meaning with your career and your promoting and everything you do. Um, the, the the last straw mm -hmm. was I was up for some show on Vice or something like that. That was like my last, I had one little shred of care about if I got a TV show or like validation from the industry or something like that. And I was up for some show to host a show on Vice. And they kind of strung me along. They're like, yeah, we want it to be you and these other hosts. And they had me audition. And I was like, am I auditioning or is my show this, that, the other? Mm -hmm. and And then they just didn't pick me. And then I was like, but I said to myself, if this doesn't go, work out, I'm going all in. What did All In thing. mean? What I did don't you do? pitch shows to any network. My goal is not to do anything on any network. Mm -hmm. I just do, if I want to do a show, I want to do a travel show, we do a travel show, we put it on YouTube. If I want to do a show- So it's all on YouTube. Everything's on YouTube. Everything's so on YouTube. So interesting. So where do you make money from the YouTube on the ads? I mean, you make a little bit on the ads. It's not that much money. But it's money. more to just grow your audience and have them come to see you live. Exactly. My whole strategy was- we can do something that very few people can do, and that's monetize the live show, right? And now you see everybody doing it. Because I know. you can't replace a live experience. Some author, fuck, the guys who go king crab fishing, they have a live show. 
Yeah. I don't know how. What are you going to talk about? Oh, we took the crabs out of the water. Yeah. I watched. Yeah. I saw you take the crabs yeah. out of the water. Yeah. One time this guy fell over. Yeah. I saw it. Right. Like, but that people want to be in the same room. So my whole thing was we can monetize the live. I'll give away everything. I'll give you everything. It's like the little sample shit that exists at Costco. Hey, here's a little pizza bagel. Oh, you like that? When I got some pizza bagels over there. Yeah, you it's go? very smart. That was my that was my people feeling. get very greedy. They in the beginning. Yeah. So do you know? Wait, what do you mean by that? Meaning, like they they just want to make money right away and not give anything for free and Fuck money. And go and go through the the networks I like you're never, saying. Yeah. You know what it is? That greed shit from the network is like people want to check and they also think like TV validates them. I oh, never it's not realistic anymore. This is all that. changing, as you know. I never thought TV validated me. I always thought the people validated me. So I when, always wanted the people. Me no matter too. What show I me did, too. All I cared about any time I did a show, even when I did the MTV shit, and I was like, mm -hmm. I just want people on Twitter or Instagram or whatever. Cause once I have the people, then we can create mm -hmm. something cool. So when you say we wanted to, was this a couple of friends? Like were there, were, were there's a little, little group of you? Like who did you do this with to make, to, so to make your shit grow? So initially much? it started a few years ago and it was, it was uh, just me. I shot my own special cause nobody wanted to, well I shot my own special cause no one was offering me one. And then I try pitched it to everybody. Nobody wanted it. So I was like, I'm gonna put it out myself. I said, specials are too long. And I got there because everybody I asked that wasn't in comedy said their biggest issue with a special was that they turned it off. They, every single person, if you ask about comedy, go, yeah, I, I was get watching it. a little bit, I, I have, turned it off. I do it too. So that's even a comic saying that. So right. I was like, what, when do you think you turn it off? And they're like, oh, I watched about like, you know, 15, 20 minutes. It was funny. But I was like, yeah, I'll get to another time. So I was like, okay, they're too long. I'm going to do 15 minutes. So I just put out a 15 minute I never knew this. So that's hour. the first thing you did. First thing I ever put on out. On YouTube for free. YouTube for free. 15 minute version. It's called 441. I did four comedy clubs in New York. So I did The Cellar, Underground, Comic Strip, Stand Up New York. I did five actually, but we cut out one for the four, 15 minute version. And I did New York Comedy Club. And I broke up my hour into chunks in each one. And I just had two film crews coming around and like filming with me. And I did it with this company, uh, Manhattan Productions, but we funded it ourselves. But my feeling was, okay, you don't care about me and my name is, you know, tainted or whatever in amongst these like industry nerds, but maybe the idea will be so cool that they'll buy the idea. Mm -hmm. I accepted my name wasn't going to do anything, right? Got it. I never got invited to festivals or any of that kind of yeah, shit. Yeah. Like it was, I was never like cool amongst mm -hmm. the comedy crowd, you know? But I was like, this is New York comedy. I'm going to give you a night in New York. Mm -hmm. Like, if you're smart and you understand yeah. comedy and you love comedy, you'll put this out. Mm -hmm. And uh, nobody wanted it, so we put it ourselves. And that shit, it was crazy. It, like, hit a million views. And then I started putting clips out every single week from it because I had an hour of material. And I just, even before I put out specials, anytime I came back into a market, I had a new hour, right? Because I felt, even if there's 40 people that come back to see me, they deserve something new. Mm -hmm. So I was always working on new, right? Mm -hmm. I did a clip a week and I was going to do a clip a week for a year. And I just do clip a week, clip a week, clip a week. And I put it on Instagram and YouTube. And I remember one clip blew up and it was on Super Bowl Sunday. And it was this joke I had about uh, that countries that treat women the worst have the best food. And it was a long, it was, a, it was a long bit, but it like really resonated. And I, to this day, I think it's maybe the best joke I've written. Because it was fun, it was silly, it was fucked up, but there was like good arguments behind mm -hmm. it, and um, but it was definitely edgy. Yeah, I mean, well, it was, see, that's why it's also hitting so hard because you're not you're not censoring yourself. That's the other thing. You don't got to you censor can't. yourself. Well, you can't. I think you YouTube. get a lot further when you don't because people want the real. Right. You know, it's like you have sex without a condom on, then you have sex with one on. You know the difference. Right. And I think what happened was, comics were always writing jokes to be on TV. I never wrote a late night set. I never wrote a joke for anything else than to be the funniest joke. I never wrote a clean joke. If the joke was clean, it was clean. But I never was like, I'm going to be clean today. Like, I'm more like you that way. That's why when you're on stage, people know who you are. Yeah. They get their experience with you because mm -hmm. you're not filtering yourself to be someone else so that someone will buy a project from you. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, of course. It's like, this is who you are. I'm getting Jessica. Yeah. Right. Well, they feel like they know me. They they all they feel do like know that you. with you now. But they know you because you're course. giving them you, not yeah, a version yeah. that is acceptable by Comedy Central or totally. whatever. Right. So then, then after you put out those clips for a year, wh when did it start blowing up? I mean, you did podcasts too. I already had. So I already had uh, a podcast with Charlemagne the God that that was huge. Right. Mm -hmm. And 
but nobody knew I did comedy because people only know what you give them. Mm -hmm. So they thought I did comedy as a hobby. They didn't realize that this is my love. This is the only thing that I do. So once they saw that I did it and that I do it well, all of a sudden they're like, oh shit, it's worth leaving the house. And I started learning all these things like about how humans interact. Like we don't go to a restaurant without looking at the Yelp review. So why would I go to a comedy club without seeing the comedy first? Mm -hmm. So once I started putting stuff on YouTube, I realized how many people before they go out to a comedy club randomly, they, do. they check. Yeah, they do. So a lot of people do. It was like all these comics out here are like, well, yeah, I did a late night show and that's my credit. So people should come out and see me. They don't give a fuck. No, you're talking <laughs> about content. If you keep putting out constant content, you're going to grow your audience, mm. period, if it's funny. And then, and this is what happens when I realized when I did, I, I did a whole nother special by myself or with my team. And then I start put building together my team. My, my guy, Alex Media, he does my video stuff. And now I have another guy on it, Mark Gagnon, really funny comic. And he's also part of it. So that's why I say we. Right, it's yeah, yeah. They're like integral in this whole process because it is. You can tell there's a team. I mean, I've to. started doing that too, and it's very helpful. You need it, and you yeah. need good people if you want to scale up. Yeah, that's that's something I would recommend to anybody. But when we started, I realized when I did Rogan for the first time, I realized the value of everything we put out. A lot of the things, some things I plan ahead, and some things I realize after the fact. And I realized when there's a lot of comics that are like, oh man, if I get on Rogan, then everything's gonna be different. It's like you need to lay the groundwork for things to be different. Right. Right? So a lot of comics will just go, I'm going rogue and all of a sudden I'm famous. Like, no. What can happen is this. You can have, like I had two specials already out and hours of video out. So then I went on Rogan and then those people found me mm -hmm. on Rogan and then they had somewhere to go when yes. there was curiosity. We have friends that are comics that might go on Rogan and have nothing else online. So they love you on Rogan and then when they look for your shit online... There's nothing. Mm -hmm. They don't have any. You don't have anything weekly for them to stay tuned to. You don't have a podcast for them to continue listening, so they forget about you. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's like you have to lay the groundwork to take advantage of an amazing opportunity like that. And you, you have all these. Th what I've been amazed at with you, which I have a little bit of a hard time with, but I'm older than you, and I've also. I mean, I'm in my 21st year. It, at some point, I was like, oh my god, I can't fucking deal with this anymore. Mm. You really interact with fans. Yeah. Like major. Yeah. And so do you stay after every show and meet people and if I can. Yeah. If I mean like now that we're doing these theaters, man, it's just not functionally it's not possible. Like yeah. we have two shows in a night, twelve hundred people. It's insane, Andrew. I, I You can't. I, I'm telling you. I would. You physically cannot shake 1,200 people's hands and, and then do another show. And have that energy. I know it's Not even the energy. It would take two hours. Yeah. So now that next show has to start at 1 a.m. I would because I'm so grateful, but physically it, it gets difficult. Now, if I'm in a comedy club, you know, because I like doing the club still. Yeah. I like working. I like getting clips. You know what yeah, I mean? Like me We too. could just go into these theaters every market, but like I feel like I'm sharp. And I feel like I can grow when yeah. I can do sh two shows a night, mm -hmm. two nights in a row. Play around, yeah. Play around, have fun, you know? Like, But yeah, those that I'll try to do, because those first few people that like become, that that like identify as your, as your supporters and like your fans, they're not only the seed, they're like the people who water it because they're telling all their friends. Like they're really spreading the word for you. So those That's people the are the most thing. important. Yeah, it really, what's your goal with the whole thing? I have a few and they keep changing. Mm -hmm. But uh, I want to start, I kind of want to flip a bunch of things on their head. So I have this special that's going to come out. I'm excited about that. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I have, I just I just built out a studio in Brooklyn. You got to come check that. it out. I saw that. I love that you did that. It was cool. To film your own stuff. And yeah, film so we got like two different podcast studios. And oh, I have, that's I have another, sick. Yeah. So I have another studio that's like, it's generic. So it's for like people who I believe in. I just want to, you know, give some structure to. Maybe that could help them build their, their studio. And then we have like a little live performance space so we could put maybe like 70 chairs in there. And I like, saw that. That is yeah. so cool. Yeah, yeah. So it'll be fun. Just do like Are random you, cool shows. You're just going to put on shows? Yeah, randomly. Just I like will a fun do those thing. anytime I would to try love out that. material. That would I would, be, I, that's what I need to do. And I want comics to experience like our crowd because our crowd, like they're unoffendable. They understand what comedy is. Like mm -hmm. we literally weed out the people who don't get it so that you can actually work out and have fun. And Do you get affected by the people that get offended? I used to, you know, and I think now, like, I just, I, I get, 
I get annoyed by two things. One, if you're drunk because I can't interact with you, I, you know. gotta, I kick you out. You're gone. And then two, if you don't understand why you're offended. Mm -hmm. And I'll give you a second to realize it. I have, I have, you know, some bit, maybe like a, a bit about abortion or something like that. And if someone just hears that word, that trigger word, like mm -hmm. there's certain words that like people hear and they just shut down. And I get annoyed by that just based on the fact that like, I think you're dumb. I know. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that you can't even have a conversation about a topic. I tell the audience that a lot. I got to scale down on that. What do you say? Every night. I did it last night, the stand, the comedy cellar. What do you say? Some of you are just very dumb. So there's nothing I can say. I can't educate you in 15 minutes. Like, yeah. I, there, it's not, I, there's nothing I can do. You're just dumb and you're not going to understand what I'm saying. Yeah. Which is the truth. Yeah. Yeah. Or they're so frightened that they could be viewed in a certain way. Well, that's a horrible way to live. I know. Horrible. And it's so hard for us to relate to because while we want to be liked, we also think differently than 99% of people and that's why we're comics so it's this weird dynamic where it's like we had to find a way where we could be liked and think different mm -hmm. and that's why funny exists yeah because if we just walked around not being funny we'd be conspiracy theorists We'd be that's Alex Jones. That's very true. That's all or comics we'd be are. in a mental institution. Or a mental institution. Yeah. Like, yeah. which people say Alex Jones should be in. Yeah. Right? Like, that's all he is, is just a not funny comic. Right. Because we would say, <laughs> the frogs are gay. Like, someone write a joke about the frogs <laughs> being gay, right? And that's so true. But we would make it funny, and you'd be like, ah, oh, shit, fuck it. Remember what he said? Ribbit, ribbit, or whatever the fuck, right? Yeah. Like, that's all we are. But we found a way to make it okay to talk about in public. That's, so a, that's, that's a, so true. Yeah, that's what I want to do. I want to build out that studio. And I think after the special, there's a couple things I want to do. I think one, I want to kind of, in the way we kind of transformed stand up and, and how people do it, I think I'm going to do that with sitcoms. I have an idea. Mm -hmm. So I think that will happen. And then two, I'd like to build out that studio and like what it is. Like I'd love to have maybe. 10 people or 10 entities, whatever, they're all working as part of this thing and like build everybody up. Like, I think New York does an incredibly horrible job with the comedy scene. We d They do. Every time I go to LA, I'm like, oh my God, I wish I could live here. It's so much better. Cause they, when it comes to podcasts and marketing. They get and, it. They want to help each other. I know they do. And that comes from Rogan. Like when the top dog mm -hmm. is the most generous, everybody got to be generous. That's right. But they're also, the the worst part about New York is you can make a living. Yeah, that's the worst part about it. Is like that we know comics that make a living at the cellar and the stand. I and know all these places it's different. Like, and when you can make a living, comics will do the least amount of work. Yeah, and most people do the least amount of work to get by. Yeah, right. So the fact that you can do that, you can't do that in L.A. So they had to figure out podcasts. Yeah, they had to figure out web series. They had to figure mm -hmm. out writing. Like every comic in L.A. writes on a show. No comics in New York write on a show. Yeah, right. They're Unless literally it's a late night show. Yeah, maybe the late right. night. Like, we have comics that are literally paying their rent $30 at a time. Mm -hmm. Cash. They're taking their $30 cash, and they're like, all right, how do I turn this into rent? Yeah. And they figure out a way to do it. And I just never saw the clubs as grateful as I am for the clubs and being able to work out there. I always saw them as, like, a means to... Me too. I think big. you got to think big. That's why it's very, like, Jim Serpico, my manager, my producing partner, and James is, is doing all the the ta videotaping editing his son he's here and i just i the thing i loved about jim right away is that he thinks big he's yeah. not a small thing he's not like let's figure out a way to get you on byron allen's comics on late like that's what a lot of these people do it's like no jim recognizes it and he's let's been at the biggest about, level yeah yeah he's made movies i know you i know, know? i and just love recognizes that recognizes the changing of, of the industry it's a different mm -hmm. game now you know and as the game changes you need to change and don't get me wrong I sit back there and I listen at some of the tables, you know, some of the, the conversations that happen at the back table. And sometimes I'll just listen. Mm -hmm. And it's like, clueless. Clueless. It's a clueless. And like preaching. Cluelessness. And it's like, yeah. ha, ha, do you not realize? You got to listen to people who have what you want. That, Can I just put that out simple. there? It's just as simple as that. I would, I would listen to Andrew's input more than I would listen to some Joe Schmo at the back table, the comedy cellar telling me who, who is not even headlining on weekends, and it's insane. They're I, all they're know it all. I was at the back table, and there was a comic. I won't say any names. I don't trash comics because if there's anything I want to say to a comic, I'll say it to them in person. 
but that's family business a lot of times for me. I don't, I, I rarely, I'll me be, too, ever I be. never do that. If you steal, that's different. Mm -hmm. If you're a piece of shit, that's different. Mm -hmm. But outside of that, I can have a personal conversation yeah. with you. But there was a comic, her name is, who was shitting on, she was a female comic, and she was shitting on Ali Wong. Who's and, brilliant. Brilliant and so successful. So, so successful. I know Ali very well. She's, br yes. So She's like, successful, a business person, hilarious, adorable. The comic was literally going like, yeah, but I don't know if she's going to have a career. And I go, and at that point, I just couldn't take it anymore. I was like, do you, she just sold out 17 shows at the Wiltern. 17. Do you, do you, how blind are you to what's happening? Like, well, they're so you, bitter. Yeah. And, and, and that's why I say like, no matter what fucking platform I'm at, I'm like, you look at what I'm doing and you do it. Yeah. This is for all of you. No, I love that. I'm the same it's way for as you. All of you. I would love to do that and help. I try. All of you. My, once we get this studio up and running all these things, the goal is to be able to put these guys, the goal is to shoot Akash's special, you know, to shoot Mark's special, to shoot all these guys, mm -hmm. you know, and, and really create a platform where I can like incubate talent. Like if I have 10 different podcasts that are super popular, all operating under Schultz Studios, imagine how easy it would be to build a fan base of a brand new podcast. Yeah. You just it's have so them go great. through. I mean, it's it's like, what Bill's do, doing for me, doing for other people. 100%. Really. And you have the comics that get it, they want to do it. It's just mm -hmm. New York. We need that. And I and that's what I want to do with New York. I want to reorganize New York. Yes. I want to get New York and I want to just do business with the people who understand business. I don't want to be with fucking pains in the ass. I want people who want to help each other. Mm -hmm. I want people who want to grow, want to support. And the people that want to do that, I think that we can completely revolutionize New York. Because we've always been the funniest. Yeah. Because we value funny the most. Yeah. But we also need to realize we could talk all the shit we want about the industry and this, that, the other, but if we're not willing to help each other, then just what's the point? I agree. Yep. You're right. What's, what's the point? Yep. And I just want to put, I just want to help you. Like if there's anything you need, I want to help you. I need to get more than one follower a day on Twitter. I got you. It's very upsetting. I got you. Cause I've been writing some funny shit. And Twitter, for some reason, is really hard for me to get You know get what followed. it is? And this is annoying. I got to follow you on Twitter so I can see. But that's another thing. It's like. You're not even following me. I I'm joking. You I'm totally you joking. You got to write funnier shit now. Uh, <laughs> 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 but it's like, but if no one's promoting you, what should you do? Just be No, I become much die? better with promoting myself. You deserve to. I have. Well, You're where, great. I, thank you. Where can people, I know you have a huge following, but I really want my, whoever doesn't follow you already, where can they go? What can they do to start following your shit, which is brilliant? It's just unbelievable. You know what? I, I would say... JessicaKirsten.com? JessicaKirsten.com. No, I'm joking. Actually, Jessica Kirsten on Twitter. That is my... <laughs> 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 that is where you can follow me. No. Um, I mean, I, I have a feeling that if you listen to this and you're intrigued, you probably check out my YouTube. Yes. And if that's what you do, great. We'll catch your eye. And you have to go see Andrew live. He's Thank you. just fucking amazing. And a lot of people aren't. <laughs> <laughs> and you. you are. You're so good. And well, we so got to organize moment. New York, Jessica. Let's do I it. I know. Like, let's do it. I'm in. I, believe I mean me, that. I've always done that here too. And I've always tried to help. I mean, a lot of people say that. I, I want to help people. But I only want to help people that work hard. Let's I am help not the people that help. deserve it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. And, I don't. And we live in the deserve it time because yeah. like, the people that are willing to put the work in mm -hmm. are going to be the people that get success. I agree. Well, <laughs> thank you so much. Much Thanks for, for having doing me. this. I love you I and love I admire you. you. I admire you. I think you're so great. Thank I think you. I really do. And I love everything that's happening for you. And honestly, I mean this. And um, if I say it, I mean this. If there's anything I can do for you, it, it is this even the smallest little thing. If you have a question about a, a fucking clip or anything like that, please just No, text I me. will. Believe me. I, you have what I want, so I will be in contact. Okay. Well, it's partly yours. Oh. There's more than enough to go around. Trust you're me. You're amazing. All right. I love you. Thanks love you. again. Bye. Bye.